Hi, this is Shree with a random personal ranking of performance shoes for 2021. Uh, mostly basketball shoes, but sometimes I'm crazy enough to wear a good runners or walking shoes for basketball because sometimes they make better performance shoes, even though some of the department were probably slacking off and just, you know, moseying around and just printing out what's there. And sometimes it works like the Matrix. The Wachowski brothers, they never had a hit after the Matrix. It was, you know, Pure luck. They have nothing going on for themselves. Uh, uh, who else is there? Um, uh, right. Uh, I can't. My mind's suddenly blank. What's that director's name? Six Sense. Yeah. The director of Six Sense. Did he ever have a good hit after that? Everything. I heard his wife helped him write a lot, man. Not too sure. These are rumors. But anyway, accidental, successful uh, masterpieces are there. Uh, some of them, you just put in a lot of work and a lot of stuff into it, but it doesn't work out. Let's start with the the two shoes that I think I wore quite for a quite considerable amount of time and was blown away by their uh, comfort and durability and affordability, I guess. Uh, Air Max 270 React ENG. ENG is a little bit different from the normal 270 React. The 270 React has the flimsy upper. The ENG has this starchy TPU coated type of upper. So it actually laces up and locks down more nicely. Uh, the Air Max is the best Air Max I've ever felt in any shoe that Nike has produced personally in terms of just heel Air Max. And then the fourth of the React is React you can feel. But the downside is the React does bottom out pretty quickly. It's pretty low to the ground. And there's a huge heel to you know to heel to toe offset. If you like that propulsion kind of feeling, then you like it. But the heel air compresses easily as well, so it's not a huge discomfort. Uh, so I felt the need to change the insole a bit because they would bottom out along with the React midsole. But all in all, it was pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, rework Energon Run. They. But traction-wise, it's not exactly the best traction. Uh, Rework Energon Run had the best, had great traction, uh, supreme cushioning with their fuel foam, um, and uh, Energon Run was the was the one available. And then the Plus came out. It was everything is the same except for the upper. The Plus Rework Energon Run has a sort of a readable flimsy upper. Rework Energon Plus has a more tightly woven lockdown assisting upper so that's the difference cushioning is pretty amazing for, for a foam cushioning to last that long i can still feel it working you know, when i put it on so it's really good traction is also very durable and good as well um lebron well let's let's, let's start with some of the crazy crazy disappointments or surprises I've had, um, I think one of the biggest disappointments was uh, LeBron 19. I think it was one of the heaviest LeBrons ever. Um, what the numbers show on the scales and what you feel on, the fit, uh, on your feet, it feels even heavier than what the numbers show. I thought the traction would be amazing, but they were good for uh, forward movement. Side to side, they were slipping a little bit. The nodules were not exactly the same as the one we've seen in the Kobe 10s. So side to side traction a little bit lacking there um heavy and the air max on the heel alone without the zoom mirror combination that we've had in the lebron 18 this is a step back several steps back words for the lebron series the flimsy air max feels like the vapor max i don't think it's the best kind of setup for basketball not very stable four foot air zoom max volume it's just really elevated and we don't need that much zoom on the forefoot. Defeats the purpose of having zoom here. Uh, and the ankle part is a sharp bit where it cuts to your uh, socks or whatever fabric you're wearing or your skin if it's exposed. It's crazy. So the price point was also pretty amazing as well. Uh, in, there's a huge disappointment there. GT series. All GT series disappointed me sorely. GT cut, uh, a bit promising. Sort of like a, a Kobe, Kobe Next 360. Uh, on steroids but even if it's on steroids it was kind of more or less felt the same just a little bit of zoom in it uh considering the amount of zoom and amount of foam in it it doesn't feel that great and i don't know why but it was released in limited amounts and people just wanted them because someone started this rumor that it's like the kobe 5 pro tros the next best thing go get them uh the scarcity i i think 
jacked up its popularity and some people swear by it but i didn't think it was all it, it i just felt like they were Kyrie's with um a little a little stiffer Kyrie's with some zoom in the heel that's how i felt about the gt cut and then the gt run series came out and they're all over the place they're uh, multiplying it it feels like they're multiplying there are uh, there's just so many of them out there and it's not that great the, the four foot double stack zoom again like i said with the lebron 18 lebron 19s you don't need two layers of zoom on the forefoot maybe on the heel do you really want that on your forefoot uh unless you have you know triple stack heel double stack zoom on the forefoot maybe but the zoom air is supposed to be lower to the ground and uh, that's the whole purpose. So if you want to stray so far from far away from the concept, it's it's pretty, yeah, pretty sad. Uh, M Night Shyamalan, that's the director's name. Doesn't seem to have his, uh, you know, bleep together. Uh, so anyway, Curry Nine was a bit of a okay GT series, GT Run, okay. And the the foam on the heel, the react was so flimsy, and the double stack zoom was so springy. So there was this huge imbalance. Uh, so yeah gt series another failure and then maybe it's because they produce so many gt runs and no one wanted it so they released limited amounts of gt jump uh i think it wasn't available in most countries and even in my country korea they've only released limited amount like the day itself i went and asked like they have one per each size or something like that which was ridiculous uh price point Okay, considering the tech involved in it, considering the tech involved in it, it just feels like, you know, a, a shoe with a plush uh, zoom air. It, there's nothing special about it. So, uh, not worth it. A lot of sizzle, not... A lot, of, a lot of sizzle, no steak. That's what I'd say. The GT series overall, they just tried to do a lot and then it didn't work out. It's like cooking. You add too much spices and you try to add salt and sugar, salt and sugar, a little bit more lemon and sugar doesn't really work out you got to keep it simple stupid a curry nine is more or less the same uh, just the upper has been changed they put a bit of a different shank plate um the midsole foam that's not a fantastic cushioning the midsole foam does not provide durable rubber durable traction like rubber material uh people are complaining about it being even more slippery than eight i, I like the nines for one reason that the upper has uh, a tongue that's separated so it's easier to slip your foot in instead of having a knit uh, a spandex upper that's like one piece booty. So that's one thing good, but I don't think it still deserves the price point it has. Um, pleasantly surprising ones, uh, the Jordan 11 retros for this last year, uh, the Legend Blue colorways, they actually came with good foam, good insole. Everything seemed closer to the original Jordans, Jordan 11s I've experienced in 95, 96. So great job on that, Nike. Uh, Immortality, Yanis Immortality was a good budget model, decent cushion, although it's just EVA foam. Uh, outsole pattern, uh, pretty good. Uh, overall, it's a much better shoe than Yanis's actual signature shoe, which is the Zoom Freak 3. Uh, the Zoom Separate, which was some say was originally designed for Zion, but then Zion wasn't really working out, wasn't really showing up for work, so they decided to put it uh, slide it over as a Luka Doncic signature. Uh, it feels like the continuation of the Jordan uh, Jumpman 2020 series, the Jumpman 2021, and this seems to be the uh, the forerunner of that. Um, decent cushioning. Uh, the dual density foam on the heel was a nice touch instead of just having some uh, hard foam or soft foam that bottoms out. The outsole pattern was innovative and nice. Uh, the outrigger and the heel cup was good. Design-wise, it was pretty interesting. Uh, Luka Doncic, unfortunately, sprained his ankle a couple of times after he put the shoe on, so a little bit concerning. Uh, so speaking of uh, ankle dangers, uh, Zion 1 is a very dangerous shoe. It will sprain your ankle right away. The outrigger is in a weird place where it doesn't help at all. Um, LeBron 18 is not as bad as the 15 in terms of the ankle fragility or uh, instability. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's that, that, that little red stripe you see there, that's a bit of a plastic plate to provide that uh, that breakage when you're spraining your ankle. But the 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 uh, the forefoot area is kind of not exactly wide. It doesn't have a prominent, prominent outrigger. So uh, although the shoe is just full length zoom air, so it's lower to the ground than most LeBron. So it's nice. But 
definitely more stable than LeBron 15, which was a automatic ankle breaker as you step out of the bus. Uh, wish it had a more prominent outrigger like the 16s. So a little bit disappointed there, but still not too bad. Uh, yeah, those two are pretty, uh, yeah, not exactly the safest, most secure uh, outrigger or ankle protection there. Um, ankle protection or really solid ankle protection you get that in terms of outrigger and stability i would say the cosmic unity is the best it's got this fat midsole that will never let you roll your ankle even if you try kd14 actually is great because they have this uh a plastic tpu uh tpu uh, uh, uh lining that actually helps provide additional breakage once the foam kind of uh you know compresses and you sprain your ankle the wrong way i've actually stepped on someone accidentally landing on that person's foot but the 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 stabilizer above the outrigger actually provided a dual stoppage that was surprisingly miraculously nice so yeah saved my life um cushioning danger let's talk about some dangerous cushionings a zion one it's super soft so fluffy and nice but the heel sinks in uh, PG-5 is the same. It's fluffy and nice, but the heel sinks in. And when the heel sinks in, because it's a full-length air trouble, the forefoot inflates while the heel deflates. So with that, it's sinking even more. So walking around, standing around, maybe it's good. But even for walking around, standing around, when you're walking around with the heel sunken, like you're practicing to improve your jump and your jump soles, that's not doing your ankle, your Achilles a big favor. So it's very dangerous to play in that. So might want to add something on the heel to, you know, provide some elevation or something that's uh, harder to stabilize your overall cushioning. And the PG-5, the cushioning was a little disappointing because the foam that they used was a lot stiffer and firmer than the PG ones they used for PG-4. So again, yeah, disappointing. Mm. The worst cushioning, uh, I think, is Dame 7. The worst possible cushioning ever. Most Adidas... Uh, with the plates, it's pretty bad, but Dame 7 is, it's a shocker. Um, yeah, traction was pretty bad on that as well. Uh, yeah, the the best cushioning, LeBron 18, no-brainer for me. Le, uh, Dame 8 was really good. Uh, Bounce Pro is a success. Uh, Harden 5 was very nice in terms of the combination that they tried with the Boost and Light Track. It was perfect perfection uh, kd14 the zoom trouble and the crush line worked nicely cosmic unity although it's lacking crush line was low to the ground and it was nice but remember to change the insoles for the cosmic unity and kd14 because the stiff starchy insole negates that wonderful zoom trouble that you want to enjoy uh the worst tr traction is uh dame seven i think i mentioned that uh Harden 5, yeah, right up there. Zion 1, pretty bad. But here's where I give Zion 1 huge credit. Breathability. It is so cold, cold if you wear it on a windy day. Uh, it is so nice if you wear it even without your socks on on a summer, hot summer day. It's so well ventilated. A little bit different depending on the colorway, but overall it's super well ventilated. Um... There was a shoe called Air Breathe Hoop where they have actually uh, areas that just cut out to let your shoe breathe. It's that cold. That's how good it is in terms of breathability. Uh, traction, the best traction I would say is the Kyrie 7, 8 and the PG-5s. Um, to point out some of the, the better shoes, uh, my top five would be uh, top five or top six, I think. Jordan 36 was great, especially because Jordan 35 was so bad. Uh, Design-wise, I think it was wonderfully done to um, pay homage to the original Jordan 6. Uh, the cushioning, the full-length zoom trouble with an additional four-foot zoom. And the great thing about Jordan 36 is what I mentioned just now for to enhance the zoom trouble experience, you need to get rid of the starchy insole. Jordan 36 actually has an insole that's that's working nicely with this trouble. So that's that means you don't have to switch the insole. So that saves you a lot of trouble. Uh, cushioning wise, it's it's great. Uh, traction, a little bit okay, but due to the uh, elevation of the zoom pod area and then the traction pattern itself, also depending on the material, not the best out there, but 
not too bad. Uh, the fit is a little bit weird because depending on the colorway, it fits narrow, it fits wide. Even though if, if it's an EP or a, um, EP or a PF, whatever alphabet they used to say, this is actually for a wider fit. No, don't trust those wordings. Uh, for me, the Luka Doncic edition was very wide. I could just go through the size. And the other colorways with uh, the uppers, that's a little bit different. It was narrow and it was like really scraping against uh, pinky toes. So KD14, uh, uh, again, I mentioned it's a uh, good cushion, great design. Uh, the traction was a little bit disappointing as well. Um, it's it's just useless on slightly dusty cords. Um, Cosmic Unity has a slightly better uh, traction, but because it's made of recycled material, it wears out a lot faster than most rubber outsoles. So uh, durability is an issue there. Cosmic Unity, again, the ankle anti-infrosion support is amazing. Uh, but KD14 and Cosmic Unity, unlike the Jordan 36, you need to switch up the insole to really feel the even Steven Zoomer unit. Because with the ordinary insoles, you feel like the toe area and the heel, it's a little bit harder and you can feel that imbalance and discomfort, that, that disjointed bits that, uh, you know, annoys you. So, uh, Daymate is a sensational Adidas shoe because Bounce Pro is a huge welcome evolution for Adidas uh, cushioning. Uh, even without boost added to it, it feels great. It feels better than most light strike or bounce, or it feels like the best of the bounce and light strike. Um, traction was shocking because all the Adidas tractions have been garbage so far, but they reused the traction they've used in classic models like the Dame One, uh, this little pattern, this waybone pattern, a little bit changed with a little bit more contour that's a lot better than just copy and pasted lazy herringbone traction that doesn't work so the traction this time works uh even on dusty quartz it works decent um it's pretty good not as good as the pg5s i think but not as good as the crazy lights or the crazy quicks but close good job uh the edges unfortunately still uses the there's a uh, lightning pattern so the edges not good edges a little bit but but overall the whole surface area the uh, the traction is good because of the wave worn type of pattern um the heel slip there's a heel slippage there so get, make sure you try it on and see if it's gonna fit you nicely or if you wear something else on your foot and it goes well nicely with you heel slippage is an issue the toe box area has a bit of a dead space so decide what size you want mm. and uh lebron 18 personally my favorite i think this was this was and still is the best basketball shoe for me. The Zoomir, full length Zoomir, Kushlan, and the Mexer does not hinder you, but rather complements the Zoom nicely by forming a tube around the heel area of the Zoom. And the more you wear it, the more it works and blends and complements each other nicely. Um, the, the traction was pretty amazing for the LeBron 18, depending on. Even if I switched to a different colorway, they felt great. I mean, I didn't try all the colorways, but most of them were very fantastic. Uh, on areas where I would slip and feel a little bit insecure with KD14s, LeBron 18 got the job done. Uh, and they're on sale all the time, especially now that they have LeBron 19 that no one wants. Uh, they're like usually selling like 70% off, so get them while you can. Uh, I wish they would continue to implement the Zoom Strobel with the heel tube. Uh, tube max um, yeah uh, the ankle stability could have been better still it's a lot safer a lot more sturdy than in terms of ankle stability uh, better than LeBron 15s oh yeah and they, they, you gotta change the insole for this one as well the given insole it, 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 it your toe area you get, you're gonna get blisters because zoom air doesn't extend all the way out there so to even things out you need to have a relatively thicker EVA or um, I would say EVA or dual density ortholite insole to make sure things are evened out to fully enjoy the cushioning and the comfort and the performance that the shoe should provide uh, and the tongue is just paper thin so try to cut out something whether if it's an insole or anything just cut out a tiny piece and put it right under the tongue so that you know you you don't feel the pinching sensation in certain areas of the lace loops and the overall uh, tongue